This video is about the new heaven and the new earth. And what's going down in the world today is the most important thing in the world. But it's also important that people understand the Bible, understand the truth, understand where we are. Now we know that the new heaven and the new earth already came according to the Bible because it said not one jot or tittle would pass from the law until heaven and earth passed. Well, there's no more daily sacrifice. The temple was destroyed. Everything already happened. And jots and tittles passed from the law. So new heaven, new earth. And the Bible itself isn't actually the problem. The problem is with doctrines that people lie about from the Bible and with translation. For example, I bet you most Christians think that because of the King James Bible and other Bibles, recent Bibles, that people were just running around buying books back then or going to the library and getting books whenever they translated it to book whenever most of the time it should have been scroll or parchment. They translated the word ecclesia, which was just a gathering of believers, whether in a house, out here, whatever, into church. And people think that they literally had churches on every corner back then and were going to church. And also, one of the most major translation issues is we call it earth. Whenever it was the word land, before Galileo and all that, it was the word land. The word in the Bible was land, a new heaven, a new land. So the belief is that there's going to be a kingdom here on earth. Whenever the Bible says the exact opposite of that, there would not be a kingdom here on earth. The belief is we were going to go back to Adam and Eve's state whenever the Bible says 100% the exact opposite of those things. And it's because people take this word earth and they think about what we know now, earth, you know. And simply put, before I get into all the details, is they went into a new heavenly land, not here on earth. Jesus said if anybody said that Jesus was back on earth, don't believe them. If they said he's in his secret chambers, don't go. If he's in the desert, don't go because he was coming back in the clouds as lightning shone from the east to the west. And if anybody said he was back on earth, those people were false Christ. He wasn't coming back to earth. People think that we were going to be restored to the Garden of Eden, but that's not what the Bible said. Hebrews literally said that if Abraham and them knew how to go back to the country from whence they'd come out of, then they would have returned. But they couldn't get back to the Garden of Eden. It said, so now they have here no continuing city, they have here no continuing country, but they look for a better hope and heavenly. They were looking for a heavenly city, whose builder and maker was God. So what the Bible actually said was, great was their reward in heaven if they were persecuted on the land. If the land of Jerusalem, earthly, or the earthly land of Jerusalem would be destroyed, and they would go into a heavenly land of Jerusalem. Hebrews chapter 12 said they came to the city of the living God, New, or Jerusalem, and heavenly Jerusalem, a mount that cannot be touched, and to a number of innumerable angels, to a company of innumerable angels, because they were going to go up into heaven and become angels. Said flesh and blood did not inherit the kingdom as they had borne the earthly, so would they bear the heavenly. It said if their earthly house of that tabernacle were dissolved, they had a home eternal, where on earth? No, in the heavens. And again right there said, a building not made with hands, whose builder and maker is God. Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven came without observation. Why is everybody trying to observe it? And we know whenever all these things changed, whenever the joss and tittles passed from the law. Stephen got stoned for saying that Jesus Christ would destroy the temple and change the customs of Moses. That's why Hebrews said that this, the Holy Spirit signifying, whenever the veil in the temple was rent, that the way into the holiest of all, heaven, was not yet manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. This is why the dead in Christ waited under the altar, because they knew that's where Jesus would descend from heaven and destroy the man of sin that sat in that temple with the brightness of his coming and the word of his mouth. Once the temple was destroyed, the believers went up into New Jerusalem. They've been in a heavenly Jerusalem for 1,953 years. And then there's two verses in the book of Revelation, that people think means that it was coming to earth. It said, New Jerusalem, right, that came down from God out of heaven. And another time, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. That was Jesus' kingdom. He told them he was like a person who went into a far country to receive a kingdom. And then whenever he received the kingdom, he came back to get his servants. He told them some of them standing there would not taste death until they saw him coming in his kingdom. What did he do? He destroyed earthly Jerusalem, and he received heavenly Jerusalem. So he comes back in his kingdom, and they do what? Meet him in the clouds. They are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so they would ever be with the Lord. And then they are taken up to heaven. He comes back to get them, not to the earth. If anybody says he's back on earth, no, he came back in the clouds to get them. They were caught up in the clouds to meet him. Once that was fulfilled, all of them were there. They went up into heaven, and they've been there the whole time. It never said that New Jerusalem would come back down to earth. That's not what it meant. Then you've got the other side of the spectrum, the spiritual people today. Oh, the kingdom of heaven is within us. It's not what he was saying. Whenever he said the kingdom of heaven comes without observation, he was talking to the Pharisees. 
And he said, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. He was quoting Jeremiah and what they requoted in Hebrews, that after those days, saith the Lord, he will put his laws in their hearts and his minds will he write them and they will be unto him his people and he will be their God and they shall not teach every man their neighbor, saying, No, the Lord, for he shall be in them from the least to the greatest. This didn't happen until they were in New Jerusalem and he wiped all tears from their eyes and everything. He wasn't telling the Pharisees that the kingdom of heaven was in them. He was talking to them about the kingdom coming. And the Pharisees were like, yeah, where is it, Jesus? Is it over here in Jerusalem? Is it over there? He said the kingdom of heaven doesn't come with observation. And then it would be in them once they were in heaven. And the Bible never said that the earth would be destroyed. Never said that. They think it says that because of a place in Peter that talks about the elements melting. But that word elements means rudiments and customs. That's like saying I went to a movie, but I didn't like certain aspects of it. I didn't like certain elements of it. That's why it said that the fashion of the world would be changed and that the customs would be changed and that he would destroy the temple and change the customs of Moses. The way the world worked would change. Joel chapter 2 said, On the great day of God, blow the trumpet in Zion, a day of darkness, all those things. In the last days he would pour out his spirit, the sun and the moon and the stars, darkness, blood, you know, vapor of smoke, that stuff. It said that a heathen army would come on the great day of God Almighty, and that they were the strongest army there had ever been, Rome, and would remain the strongest army after the day of the Lord, the great day of the Lord, the terrible day of darkness, and all that. After that, they would remain the strongest army to the years of many generations after because there's still people it wasn't the destruction of the whole planet they fled judea don't enter back into israel's countries there would be great wrath upon that people the temple wouldn't be destroyed that's not something you say to people if you're going to destroy the whole world and then it says mountains and islands flood away so i'm going to tell you to do your own thing here i want you to type in it usually said isles instead of islands in the old testament so type in mountains and isles flee or fled away in the old testament Every time that it says that, it's talking about the people who lived on the mountains and the islands. They fled away. Not just the land of Israel, but also the people on the mountains and the islands would flee away. Not the entire world. Islands and mountains weren't going to flee away. The next verse says that hailstones fell on them the weight of a talent in Mystery Babylon, which was a city on seven hills. So if the mountains and the islands fled away, how are these people just standing in midair getting hit with hailstones the weight of a talent? Now, if you go back and read the Bible with this in mind, you will see exactly what happened, that it was all filled in that generation. It was all fulfilled. They went up into heaven. They've been in heaven the whole time. He rules over the house of Jacob. He has a kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. They went in. They were saved from the earthly kingdom that was destroyed, and they went into a new heavenly kingdom where Jesus Christ reigns forever over the house of Jacob in an everlasting city in heaven, and everybody who ever believed him was there. But then he finished his work, handed it back to the Father. Today we worship God, not Jesus. We're not going to New Jerusalem. We didn't come out of old Jerusalem. We will go into a different city in heaven. And what did Jesus say? He went away to prepare a place for them, because in his Father's house there were many mansions. He ascended up to heaven to prepare a place for them, that so where he was, they could be with him also. They would go up into heaven. Great was their reward in heaven. Heavenly, heavenly bodies, they are there everlasting kingdom they have nothing to do with this earth and as usual of course i want you to give me a follow i make videos i hope you do oh and one other thing the bride adorned for a husband coming down like that that had to do with how they got married back then and how they still get married today the bride walks down the aisle today it used to be stairs the bride would come out of her chambers she would be decked in the best clothes that money could buy to show off how much money the groom had and then she would present herself to the groom and jesus christ came back the bride went up and went up to God.